All right, Tim, could resizable bar and or direct storage give eight gigabyte GPUs any relief? So we do see this question a fair bit. Um, and well, I have seen yeah. game developers answer this question and the answer from them was no. I mean, we've seen resizable bar right now. Mm -hmm. We know There's, how that works. We know how that works. And it's pretty clear that that is not going to be a solution to VRAM capacity issues. Mm -hmm. With direct storage, obviously, there's fewer titles at the moment that take advantage of that, so it's harder to draw a definite conclusion. But just by the way it works, it's very unlikely it would have any impact. Mm -hmm. Direct storage is all about loading directly off your SSD, um, so how quickly games can load in assets to minimize things like loading screens, which obviously, like, you know, you want to take a loading screen that takes 10 seconds down to one second. That's a huge improvement. You can potentially eliminate loading screens altogether by mm -hmm. technology like that. But we're talking about like 10 seconds versus one second. With VRAM, you're talking about millisecond levels of loading. Yeah, and huge on, amounts of data. On top of that, there are always the issue as to why low capacity of VRAM has such an impact on games is that all those assets are being stored with a high bandwidth to the GPU. So VRAM has a very high bandwidth towards the GPU. So as assets are being used, they need that high bandwidth. And the reason that they slow down and stutter so much when the VRAM capacity gets exceeded is they're starting to have to hit up system memory or storage, which comes at a much lower bandwidth. And higher latency. And higher latency. So if direct storage is loading not from GPU VRAM, but from a much slower storage device with lower bandwidth, it's not really going to solve the issues with VRAM capacity. You're going to have, yes, it's going to give you access to those assets in a more efficient, faster manner. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is due to, you know, decompression. A lot of games are very inefficient with the way they decompress assets from storage. Um, they're very single-threaded. Direct storage improves that by doing a lot of the work on the GPU, so assets can be decompressed a lot more quickly, which then improves loading times. But it doesn't allow those, you know, texture assets stored in VRAM to be accessed at the same speed from storage. It's just physically not possible yeah. for that to happen. The storage interface is nowhere near as fast as the GDDR6 interface, which is, again, why we have tiered storage. Because if direct storage was the solution, you would just plug your M.2 drive in and you wouldn't bother with any VRAM at all. You yeah, would just yeah. well, have we... two terabytes of super fast access, but unfortunately that's not the way it works. Yeah, the problem with the 4060 series is that with the 128-bit wide memory bus and the 17 gigabits per second memory, you're ending up with memory bandwidth of around 280 gigabytes per second, which is slow by GPU to local memory standards, and how fast you know is your storage? Like 10 gigabytes per second would be PCI a, one of the fastest SSDs of all time. Yeah, so it's just it's technically not possible when you think about it like that. And high-end GPUs, you're looking at well over like you know, 500 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth, mm -hmm. and we've had HBM that does over you know a terabyte. So. And that's what they need for, for things like loading textures and loading assets. If you're needing to access that memory every single frame, mm -hmm. access that data, then you can't be you, know, <laughs> you can't be using the latency and storage, mm -hmm. uh, the bandwidth, sorry, of storage devices. So, so short answer, no. That's right.